Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Believe It, Achieve It. I am very excited to have with me today Lala Madja. Lala Madja is a multi award winning professional makeup artist with over 28 years of industry experience, a serial entrepreneur, beauty influencer, and self confessed beauty junkie. She is well known for her work in fashion, film, and music across the UK and in Africa. Her films include The Figurine, October 1, 50, and the upcoming highly anticipated Citation. Celebrity clients have included Iman, Tyson Beckford, Tiwa Savage, Wizkid, Yemi Alade, Angelique Kidjo, Danny Glover, Ajoke Silva, and Princess Fifi Ejindu. Her work has appeared on Vogue Italia and many other international publications. Lala is a pioneer lash and brow expert, the founder of Sacred Lashes, as well as a qualified beauty therapist, holistic therapist, SFX prosthetics technician, and a UK certified adult further education teacher. Lola's beauty show, Kiss and Makeup, on telenovela giant Eva TV, is shown across the majority of countries in Africa, helping everyday women with simple, fun tips and tricks. For more information about Lola, check out her website, www.lolamaja.com. Hope you enjoy the episode. I just want to start with how do you do it all? Oh my <laughs> God. Like, seriously, tell me, tell me, how do you do it? We've got to start with that. Wow. Okay, I think, I think the first, the first answer to that is I'm old. <laughs> oh, wow, you're... <laughs> Look, I've been you, doing it. I feel like I've been doing it for such a long time. Oh my god, you know what? You're not old. I don't think you can age. Like seriously, like I feel like every time I see you on Instagram, like you're doing something, <laughs> something fresh. Like how oh. do you do it? Do you know, I. It's just. It's just an evolution because I literally have been doing this for more years than I haven't, if that makes sense. So I started when I was 14. So I'm 42 now. So I have literally been in this industry and I've been living my dreams for longer than I haven't been. So, you know, most of my life has been dedicated to the whole beauty and makeup and, and just everything, everything I've loved doing, I've just managed to cram it in. (laughs) And tell me what, what was 14 year old Lola like? (sighs) 14 year old Lola was very much like my seven year old daughter Tallulah right oh my now. God. I love Tallulah. I love Tallulah. I showed Ivy, we were watching Tallulah and they were like, I want to, I want to meet her. I want to do what she's doing. She's so, she's so you. She's a mini you. I look at her and I just, and I, I get it. I understand, you know, when, when she was two years old and I was buying her as one of her Christmas presents, a Hello Kitty makeup table and a full um, brush set and a makeup train case. My mom was like, you know, she's two years old, right? And I was like, <laughs> You know she's Tallulah, right? <laughs> that is so it's the, the child that was crying. We have a video of her on Instagram yeah. where she's literally crying tears, saying, I want to wear makeup. I want to wear makeup. Girls wear makeup. Wow. And it just strikes a chord with me because, I, well, to be honest, I was a real tomboy until my 13th birthday and my mom was like right you're a teenager now you can wear a little bit of makeup I was going out with my friends and she brought out black eyeliner and clear lip gloss and like literally (laughs) it was like woo! what is this I was like oh my god so yeah literally it only took a year from me being a tomboy into me basically starting to be a makeup artist. Um, wow, and, and who, who were you practicing on? Who were your first clients? Okay, so the way it worked in my house, let me tell you how it was. <laughs> tell us the details. <laughs> the way it worked in my house was there was five children, one boy and four girls. And um, all of us girls, my mum put us to task. She was literally, um, she had us all working in her own very, private personal um, beauty salon so we thought we thought we were all having fun playing games pretending to wash mummy's hair pretending to do her feet giving her massage oh yeah mom she was living it up listen child labor she was like i did not have four children or four girls my brother was in charge of other things because he refused to massage her feet but my son hasn't gotten away my son hasn't gotten away he has to massage feet 
<laughs> he put Adam to work. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he's he's getting put to work. He knows all about makeup. It's I it's painting to him. Oh, I love but, that. But um, yeah, so we all had different tasks, and you know, my mom always had me down as doing the massages and doing um, just you know, pretending to give her facials and stuff. My sisters were doing hair and different things. <laughs> so, um, I literally at fourteen. Um, I realized that I could make money because I had, I had an older sister who she was 18 and she got a job at a temp agency, basically working, doing perfume, like standing there in Harrods and Selfridges spraying perfume at people. Like, would you like to spray? Would you like to smell? Would you like to smell? It's it's a hard job, you know, it's hard to get (laughs) attention. It's a lot of attention. So, so she was 18. She's four years older than me. She was 18 and she joined these agencies and um when she told me about the job she was doing i was like i could do that yeah. like you're getting you're getting paid to do that you're it. getting paid to put makeup on people's faces i was like i can do that but i couldn't do that because i was 14 years old and i didn't have a national insurance number i love it love it <laughs> so, say anything. <laughs> I, so I, I borrowed i borrowed my sister's national insurance number for two years until i was <laughs> But you know what? I love that hustle. So you had that from day one, from the get-go. Yeah. You knew that yeah. if you wanted yeah. to do something, you're going to find a way. I was like, I was like, listen, listen, there's money to be made. I'm 14 years old, you know, um, part-time. Other kids are going out and getting like a newspaper round. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to work in Selfridges that. and Harrods and, oh. and I'm, working, I'm working in boots around the country, you know. Um, doing this, learning, doing makeup, doing perfume, standing there smiling. Would you like oh, to try? Like <laughs> well, you so, confident. Like, yeah, I mean, I was used to hanging around. I was used to hanging around with older people. I had all these big sisters, older cousins, you know, so I was very used to being amongst older company. And everybody that I was working with did not know my age. They all thought I was 18. So, you know, just came with the territory. You just got on with it. I made money and I all the way it. through school. Yeah, school, I college, ab- university. That's what I was doing. I absolutely love it. And again, <laughs> you know, just going back to your bio, um, I was just saying like everything that strikes me is that you have continued to evolve. I mean, when did you realize that you had the power to sort of take charge of that journey? And it really was in your hands. I think it was just before I, um, just around my 18th, around my 18th birthday or so, because up until this point, I'd been working already for four years. So I was experienced now, you know, I'm, I'm doing makeup. And the great thing was a lot of the companies, a lot of the agencies I was working for, they trained you um, doing the makeup. I had a natural gift for art. I was studying art in school and I just saw it as an extension of, yes. you know, of what I love doing. So um, when I was 18 and I was in university, I basically was offered the chance to launch Iman Cosmetics in England. Wow. And that was the kind of turning point for mm-hmm. me where it was, as I said earlier, I had been doing it, you know, in school, I had been doing it GCSEs at college. Um, I was now in university doing this and I thought, I have a chance to actually do my dream job or do I keep on studying and, you know, get my degree and qualify and still go and do my dream job? (laughs) Yeah, that's that's hard. That's really hard because I guess at that point it must have felt like it's here now. Should I not do it? Yeah, it, it was literally on, it was landing in, in my lap because the other people that were being offered the job, um, they were basically building a team of um, very unique individuals. Iman Cosmetics at that time was very exciting because the industry, um, there wasn't black owned brands. There wasn't so a lot of exist. Sorry, say that again. Was there Mac at that point? Or was it no, just- Mac, hadn't, Mac hadn't launched wow. the Selfridges yet. So there was Flory Roberts and there was um, one other brand. I can't remember. There was Flory Roberts and Fashion Fair. Wow. Oh my God, I remember that, Fashion Fair. <laughs> those were the two brands that were in Selfridges at that time. Wow. And we're talking about Iman Cosmetics was coming. Iman herself was coming to launch this. Wow. You know, she did the whole launch. She was in the front window of Selfridges. It, it was amazing. Oh. It was mind-blowing. It was such a pivotal moment in the whole 
industry for women of color because they literally catered for everybody from Chinese, um, very, very pale skin tones down to the darkest skin tones. Wow. So everybody on the counter, um, they wanted at least one kind of skin tone, one person to represent all the shades. Yeah. So there was a Chinese girl, there was a white girl, there was a um, Asian man, there was a dark skin black girl and a light skin I black girl. That. So, so that every person that came to the counter would feel included. There was somebody that you could identify with. And, you know, we were going to get trained by Iman's personal makeup artist. We were doing all these things and this whole promotion. And I thought, full-time paid job doing this or stay in school? And I chose to, I chose to leave university and went straight into work. And I was like, anything I need to learn, I'll catch up later. <laughs> and do you know what? I'm a big believer that I think, I think we learn so much more on the job. You know? We do, we do. Because one of the other girls, um, she, was, she was much older than me. Again, I was the, I was the youngest. But um, <laughs> one of the other girls had literally come straight out of um, beauty school. She had gone to London College of Fashion and she had her um, qualifications as a makeup artist. And I was there at this point, 18 years old, very fresh, but with work experience under my belt. And exactly. I, thought, I thought, why wait? You know, she's like in her 20s and I'm here ready to go. So that was a point for me where I thought just grab your dreams and chase yeah. it. And, you know, especially having, um, <laughs> having Nigerian parents. Having oh, parents yeah. how, how did they take that? Was, was that a big, big deal? girl you know it was a big deal <laughs> you know it was. did they bring out the kaboko <laughs> so my I dad the kaboko is again <laughs> my dad was not impressed wow at all at all i was about i was i was uh, i was going to be a uni i was going to be a uni dropout wow. i was going to be a dropout you know he was like my child is going to drop out of school and go and do what go and do makeup you're going to go and be painting faces on, on the oh counter. Oh my God. I can, I can literally imagine the face. Oh, like, oh, like, what are you yeah. thinking? Like, literally, what am I thinking? But my mom was always so supportive. She always supported me. Um, so I'm trying to obviously, like, pass it on to my kids. But my mom was very much like, as long as you do your best and as long as you're doing what makes you happy and you're able to make money from it. She was like, you're talented at this. So why not? You know? So yeah. Do you know what? It's not I, for I, my mom. <laughs> I totally reson it, it, it resonates with me because when I quit my job and I had been offered a promotion at the time I quit the job to run yeah. London Tech, which had no guarantee of any income. Like a lot of people thought I was crazy and they were like, right. what are you doing? Like, why would you leave a good job to do that? And like, yeah, no, no idea of whether it's going to work or not, but actually I totally get it. If it feels like it's something you're destined to do, it's your calling. Yeah. How can you not? Like, why not? Really? Why not? You know, a lot of people did say, why not just finish school and then do it afterwards. But I just, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be a makeup artist and I thought, well, I can always go back to school afterwards and finish off and actually do a degree that I really wanted to. I was, I was loving the degree I was doing, but at that time as well, um, the university had changed some of the criteria. So I just, I took everything as a sign and I said, well, you know what? Yeah. Let me just, let me just follow my dream. And I believe in signs. I really yeah. do. You have to follow that gut and trust yourself, trust in God. Like I'm, you know, yeah. a believer in God and, and I think you have to listen now, but at half the time it's, it's just being still and listening. I think if we're so much on the go, I mean, how do you find your time to be still and, and reflect? Cause I know you wear so many hats. <laughs> I mean, what is, what does that look like for you? When is your moment of calm and, and create, you know, because you need that time to create. When do you find that yeah. time to create? Um, just the little moments, just the little times that you can. I mean, I'm not, I'm not quite sure if you can actually hear the music playing in the background. I think I should have turned it off. I hope it's not disturbing. Can't hear but, it. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't believe me when I say I literally don't watch much TV at all. Do at not? all. No, I don't. I, you work in the TV world. I work. Oh my god! I work in the industry. Wow! And people are like, "Oh, have you watched this show? Have you watched that show?" And I'm like, 
no i mean every room in this house has a tv um i only bought a tv for myself last year and that was because of that was because of my children just so that we could spend um time together watching programs and cuddling up in bed and things like that but every room in the house has tvs including the kitchen and you're just like okay it's, it's there's a lot going on so when I come into my room or if I go into, if I'm in my office, um, it's literally that time that you have to just be silent because there's so much noise going on, you know, even before I had the kids, but now, especially, you know, as well, like it's there hard. is no such thing as silence. And if there is silence, that means there's something wrong. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. You need to go inspect. <laughs> like, why is it so quiet? What's, happening? Is it quiet? What's going on? Is everybody all right? Are you still alive? <laughs> But um, yeah, it's just having those moments and just literally sometimes just being still, being quiet. Um, I've started trying to read again. I haven't, I used to be an avid reader, but I haven't had a chance much to read lately. So in this lockdown period, it's given yeah. us all the time to just, you know, reconnect. And I enjoy those quiet moments. For me, it's when I'm cooking. I... I put on my headphones and I'm like, no one come and disturb me in my kitchen. I, I put my headphones on and that's when I listen to like my podcast or I, I listen to books on Audible. Oh, lovely. I, I wanted again, to start trying that. Yeah. yeah. There's no time to sit down and hold a book. So I'm going to be honest, I'm not much of a cook. <laughs> <laughs> so if for me, it would be when I'm ordering. No away. way. <laughs> I, you know, I would have thought that you were like the queen of cooking. So, so what's your, um, I mean, what do you, what's your go-to? What's your go-to dinner for the kids? I'm, I'm a cleaner. I'm a cleaner. I'm, I, I have OCD. I'm a obsessive. So I can literally come in and still have my handbag on my shoulders, still have my coat on, still have my shoes on and see something is not right and start cleaning. And, and they'll be like, they'll be like, do you want to put down your bag? And I'm like, yeah, in a minute. Hold on. Let me just like, tidy this up. The opposite for me. Um, I hate cleaning. <laughs> you know, I thought it was a Nigerian thing because of the way we, a lot of us grew up with having help in the house. I hate cleaning, and oh my goodness, my, my even was, even my staff, my staff know, my staff know about me in Nigeria because <laughs> I'm like, is it because is it because I'm paying to come and do this, my friend? I'll do it myself. Move, and I'll be there, and I'll be like, they'll be like, ah, oh, see, let me do that. And I'm like, no, 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 don't worry, it's okay. I can't do it. I can't do it. Don't worry. I'm doing it. And you end up doing it, you know. Yeah, but um, but it's so <laughs> funny because a lot of people actually clean before the cleaner arrives over here. They're like, I'm just going to clean up a little bit. They don't know. I'm just going to tie it up. I don't, them, I don't want them to see that much dirt. Yes. What's the point? <laughs> Literally. Oh, my God. That is so funny. But, but, but tell me, um, I guess, how do you move between sort of one activity to the next? Because, you know, some days you're doing makeup and then you're on set and, and then you also you run your own business. How does that work in Lola's head? How, how do you divide that time? I don't. And that, that's what keeps me going. Because I feel like if you start trying to partition or... My husband's always like... <laughs> my husband's always like, you need a schedule. You need to write things. But I'm a creative. I'm a visual. Yeah. And I'm a very free-flowing spirit. So how I've ended up in all of these avenues, how I've ended up flowing into all these different things that I do has just been very natural for me and I enjoy that because I enjoy not knowing week to week some yes. people need rigidity some people need that structure otherwise they feel displaced mm -hmm. but if I start feeling like it's mundane if I if I feel like it's clockwork like you're just going through the motions then you start feeling like you lose the passion you lose the interest you don't want to wake up in the morning you don't want to do it anymore because it feels like work yeah. whereas I don't feel like I work I feel like I just live life and work is a part of my life and every day every week is different whether it's the kids whether I'm working whether I'm not working it's just my life I and love <laughs> that I absolutely love that and do you just sort of you know, like how, how does it work in terms of finding the projects to work on? Do you actively look for them or are you finding that they just come to you? I put a lot of things in God's hands, to be honest. Um, 
yes, you have to, God helps those that help themselves. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I just I sit back and so. say, I want the work. <laughs> but my, but, my mentor always says, the, cal- the cavalry is not coming. You exactly. need to get up and go find that get opportunity. Up and go find it. Yeah. Um, I, I can sit here and I can pretend like I'm this hugely motivated go-getter, but there are times where I'm just like, ugh, and I see, I see work passing me by. I see jobs that I think, oh, I should have been on that, or I, why didn't I get that, or did they forget about me, or, um, you know, maybe I'm not pushing myself enough, and I just always have to believe in God and know that what is meant for me will always come to yes. me. And, yes. you know, there are, there are projects that go by that you think, oh, I wish I had, wish I was on that. And then you find out afterwards and you're like, oh, yes, oh, that was the luckiest, oh. escape. luckiest. <laughs> escape. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm glad I wasn't on that one. <laughs> it's, so, it's so true. And, and this is something we talked about in, in the previous episode around how it's very easy for people to compare and think, oh, well, I should be at this stage when you look at other people in the industry. Or again, as you said, I should have had that opportunity. But yeah. I believe in that thing of trusting the universe, trusting that what's for you is for you <clears throat> and nobody will take. Yeah, and nobody will take. I had a really interesting conversation just a couple of days ago with one of my friends. And we've both been working since we were very young and we both had this entrepreneurial spirit and it became very clear to us that I almost feel like I have already lived several lifetimes in that because I started so young all the things that I've pushed myself to do all the experiences that I've had are kind of like what people are doing right now or some people are doing right now so where I'm sitting here and looking at other people in the industry and, and sometimes I do think, Oh, they're really working hard. Oh, they're, they're doing so well. Or, you know, Oh, why isn't it quite clicking for me? I have, I actually had to remind myself, well, you've done your thing. You did that. And sometimes it's very easy for you to forget all the things you've done. I'm, I'm redoing my website at the moment. And my husband was like, okay, now you need to gather all the stuff to give to the designer. And I thought, if I have to gather all the stuff to give the designer, I might as well just do it myself. Yeah. Because I, I, I design all of my sites from my e-commerce to my wow. personal sites. I've always done that. Because again, OCD, I like to be in control. Of <laughs> <laughs> and when you start gathering your own things and it's always strange like when you're in when you're introducing me and you're hearing these things and you're having to remind yourself oh yeah I forgot I did that oh oh, yeah I forgot I did this and when I think I've been doing this for 28 years it's not my point right now to be doing what others are doing in their timeline we're on different paths we're on different trajectories oh my god and I just have to believe that my own stage of evolution right now is to develop into something else. So I'm so glad that I managed to do all these things when I was younger, because now that I am 42, I got married, not that I got married really late, but I got married when I was meant to get married. Exactly. Oh, Lola. Lola. (laughs) You needed to say that. So I think many people need to hear that. Yeah, because I got married at 32. I got married in my time. 32, um... My sister got married at 34. And again, it's a testimony to be blessed with a parent, parents that are not constantly hounding us because my yeah. other sister got married at 25. So we've had, my brother got married at 24. So we've had like those times yeah. of somebody getting married early, somebody getting married a bit later. And there wasn't a pressure. It was whatever's right for you. And I was able to do everything I needed to do before I had the kids. So yeah. I feel like, okay, well, why am I rushing? Does it mean that I'm now going to um, sacrifice the time that I have with my children? Maybe this is what I'm meant to be doing right now, you know, exactly. and fit work in around my family rather than fit in my family around work. Oh, you're speaking my language. <laughs> <laughs> I won't compromise on the kids. Yeah, I'm not putting no anybody day, else day down. Day. No. Everybody has their own parts, but I know what I feel comfortable with. I know what fits and what works for me and I feel like a lot of people that started businesses or started on their change of career path when they were older because you know the way life is you go through a path that has kind of been 
predestined for you in that other people are telling you that this is what you're meant to do by a certain age. We have all these, all these milestones, all these, you know, guidelines that by the time you're 23, you have to graduate from university. By the time you're 25, you started your career. By the time you're 30, you're supposed to be married with kids and have bought your house. And then there gets to a point where you've done all those things a lot of people, not everybody, but, you know, coming from certain backgrounds, you know, these are what's pushed in your head exactly. and you turn 40 and you think, what now? You know, some people, some people have grown up kids by the time they're 40. Some people, um, you know, have their businesses, they have mortgages, they have all these things, or the kids have graduated from school and they're sitting there like, what now? What about me? So I have a lot of friends who are, not late bloomers, but are changers. Um, you know, they've decided to change the course of their path in their late thirties or early forties and they're rediscovering themselves. They're, you know, doing what they always wanted to do, going into businesses that they thought that wasn't the right thing for them to do because it wasn't sensible. It wasn't what we were told to do when we were young. We were all told to be doctors, lawyers, business yes. people, you know, architects, whatever, whatever, all these professionalisms. And here I was telling my dad that I wanted to go to university and study photography and design. And he's like, eh? photography. <laughs> you want to go to university and study what? <laughs> and then upon, upon that first fight of going to university and not saying I'm going to be a doctor, lawyer, oh, or, a, or a whatever, saying I'm going to go and do photo <laughs> for, 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 for after fighting oh, to go to uni to study photography and media management, dropping out and starting work, he's like, <laughs> my <laughs> child, <laughs> this child, you know. So he always he always oh, nicknamed me the artist cuckoo because I was the very unserious one in the family. So anything oh. anything at all that I did that was kind of. Um, less than the less than the bar had been set it was always like is it not lola is lola is it not lola <laughs> so is it fair to say you're the rebel in the family i think it's fair to say i'm probably the useless one <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, uh, we might uh, need to put pressure on that bio. The free spirits. Lola, the, the artist. I the love it. Spirit. But um, everybody else, I mean, it's, it's, we all have followed different paths and now everybody's kind of also doing their own thing. My older sister went and did catering at one point as well. And, um, you know, my little, my, the youngest is probably the, far most sensible out of all of us she's the most studious but now my older brother has an amazing fitness business who would have known you know when he was yes. studying his mba that he would he would end up doing you know like I a fitness that. company who knew? You know, i tell people that nigerian nigerians are just so entrepreneurial i almost feel like it's in our blood it's we're pretty right. much destined to start something so, so I wish, I really wish, right, my dad, bless his soul, passed away three years ago. And when um, he did pass and I had to start going through a lot of his files and things, my dad, if you ask him what he did, he'll tell you he was a businessman, right? I'm a businessman. So growing up, growing up as a child, you're always like, what did your dad do? Oh, he's a businessman. What does that mean? Hey, he does business. You know? <laughs> business what does that mean i don't know he does business so and it was it's a very nigerian thing to be yeah. a businessman i'm a businessman I'm that's an entrepreneur. true you know so funnily i knew my dad had done all these different things i had heard different company names i had heard he he did this he did that he did this and he was 93 when he passed away so he had a very long life but um, when i was going through his paperwork I was uncovering all these different businesses, right? All these different company names. And I was saying to my mom, mommy, like really how many companies oh, did this man have? And it, yeah. it, it was just mind blowing. And I think at last count, there was over 30 something companies oh that, he had, God, that he had registered. Serial entrepreneur. A serial entrepreneur. And I remember him always saying, you know, you have to just try different businesses. Some will succeed and some won't. And the ones that don't succeed are, are lessons to be learned, you know. Yeah. So I'm there laughing, thinking, you old man, you're there telling me, telling me. <laughs> Meanwhile, 
<laughs> Meanwhile, you were oh, the rebel, you yeah. know. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's in your blood. It's in your yeah. blood. <laughs> and, and when did you start good. your latest business in, in sort of the in the film and in the prosthetic I mean you're doing incredible stuff in, in with movies when when did that start <laughs> um I like I have a I have a habit I'm a serial entrepreneur I have a habit of launching businesses on my <laughs> on my birthday that way it's easy oh my god when's your birthday when's your birthday 26th of January Aquarius okay, <laughs> Makes sense when you find out I'm an Aquarian. But, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the last one, the SFX store is five years old now. Um, yeah. About time I start a new business. <laughs> Come and watch, watch out for January. I, I will be watching this space. <laughs> and did you know much about the space before you got into it? So, yes. Right. So what had happened was <laughs> um, I had been working in the film and TV industry and I went to Nigeria and I, I set myself up there, um, started working. And from the very onset, I realized that there was a gap in the industry for actual products yeah. because um, I couldn't get them. So whenever I was doing, I had to bring them over from England with wow. me or it was a real struggle finding stuff on the ground in Nigeria. And I thought, well, okay, hold on, something going on here. But at that point, there wasn't an industry, there wasn't a need for it. You know, um, I was very heavily into the beauty industry at this point, because I'm a therapist, I'm an educator, I was a working makeup artist as well. So even though I was working in the film and TV and doing makeup on the film sets that industry hadn't really bloomed 10 years ago yeah. when I first got to Nigeria you know I was doing it and a lot of people were like why are you even doing films there's no money in films you know it's a lot of work long hours it takes a long time compared to just going and doing a bride or going and doing oh I'm bare makeup or I know oh my parties. god the layers yeah. oh, wow but it was it was a passion and I was really enjoying the film sets and I started gravitating more towards because I was doing a lot of creative makeup I was doing a lot of um photo shoots um artistic work um doing fashion you know doing a lot of the fashion shows and slowly and steadily I started moving away from the beauty I mean when I was in England I was doing a bride every weekend you know I was constantly working. Then I got to Nigeria and everybody was doing brides. Mm. And I just started exploring new avenues because um, there was where there is a lack of something that becomes an opportunity for somebody to build. Yeah. So I started working in the industry there, started realizing that, okay, and people started asking me to bring things for them. I started needing things for myself and I had a shop. But again, at that point, we were focused mostly on um, beauty and the shop, the shop is still there. But eventually what we did is we started se um, separating and it grew from just being beauty. And then I set it up a very small area for special effects makeup. My husband, again, has been my number one cheerleader throughout. Oh. He was the one. He was the one. Let me give him, let me give him his roses. Let me Yay. give him his accolades. Let me give it to him because he kept on pushing me about really focusing on the SFX store. And I was like, but there's no industry, really. There's no chance right now. I need to build it up. I need to create a customer base. And he was like, do it, do it. Because if you focus on it, then you can actually build it. But yes. right now you're focusing on the beauty side. But if you focus and put your energies into the SFX side, you will build it. And I was like, and it took about back and forth thing for about a year or so of him harassing me, literally harassing me until it he got to a point where he said, he believed in you. He believed, he what believed. And, and he actually said, you know what? Actually, you're not doing this business. I'm going to do this business. I'm going to set it up and you're just going to be, you're just going to run it. You're just going to manage it. And I was like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Partner in crime. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's and, it, and, it, and it does, take a lot of energy and it's so nice to know that there's someone on your side because that's, yeah. that's really powerful totally totally so um yeah so I I um I ended up having to face the face face my front and yes. say you know, you know what you're you're right and um at that point I had a I had the training school which was um 
I had a makeup artistry school. I had a beauty therapy school. Wow. Um, I was working as a full-time makeup artist as well on set. I was doing um, TV. You know, I had I had my own programs as well. I was doing I was doing so many different things. Plus, I had two young children, and it was just it was a lot. So it got to a point where we had to scale back, and I said, yeah. "Okay, you know what? I am going to focus on the SFX store." And there was no customer base at this point. When I launched it, it was like, I have literally had to build up my own customers through educating them. Because unless people know what they need to use, unless people know how yes. to use them, they can't come and buy the products from you. So true, so true. But yeah, so it's been five years. So and it's, it's been good because now there are just so many blossoming makeup artists. Everybody's really getting into it. You know, before people just would have thought that you were very strange when I'm sitting there going, blood, 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 give me blood. I love blood. Oh my gosh. You must love Halloween. I bet yeah, Saturday like, is going to be blood. I used to have little Halloween parties in my office and people would be like, just so Christy. You know? And I'm like, no, no, no. It's like, just fake and they're like uh Linda's cultist what, what is she doing imagine coming to your office and you're just like covered in blood randomly I love it randomly, <laughs> randomly you know but it, it's been good it's been really good and we give thanks that um now there is an industry now there is demand and yeah just on to the next phase now <laughs> I love it I love it what motivates you to get out of bed every day Nothing motivates me. I'm physically dragged out of bed by two children. <laughs> Life just drags me out. I love it. Life, my love. Life, oh. Life just drags you out because you, you have no other choice. Oh my, are you a morning person? No. No. Is it, is it no. Um, what am I? I'm not a morning person. I'm not a nighttime person. I'm just a person. It, it depends. It depends on what's going on in my life because... Yes. I say I'm not a morning person, but um, when I'm working on film sets, sometimes I have to be on set at 5 a.m. So I have to wake up early and you've got to wake up and you've got to get on set and you've got to be ready to yeah. do the job. You know, I'm not a morning person, but when I wake up the kids, I don't like to wake them up. Like, wake up, it's wake yeah. up. Yeah, oh God, I, that, always... was, that was my mom. <laughs> oh, it used to, oh, it used to like, my nanny in Nigeria, she would, very, very typically, you know, very typically of, of, of her. Wake up. She would <laughs> go in, bam, switch on the light. And you know, it's just like, you know, the light switch, the bright lights, bright lights, bright lights. And, and then she'd be like, wake up. Cause she was, she was an ex boxer. So she was very army. Like, wow. yeah, she was, she was, I, I liked her because I knew nobody could mess with my children because she was like ex state championship boxer. But it was lacking a little bit of the soft side. So I ended up having, I'd be like, don't worry, don't worry, I'll wake them up, don't worry. Because, you know, the kids would wake up and they'd be like, <laughs> I can imagine. You know, so I got into this routine of, um, of having like a gradual wake up process where I forced myself to almost become like some sort of Disney princess. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, put, I'll put on music oh. and it's only in the last maybe since this year I would always go into their room playing music um, and I would be singing and it would be the wow. most ridiculous it would be you know um, I could have danced all night you know or yeah. you know, <laughs> my, my, my favorite would be like good morning good morning oh, we slept the whole night through and it would be this whole like song and dance and just gently waking them up so that everybody would just wake up in the right mood and even though like my eyes are like this oh, I'm just like, you did I'm like, for your baby I'm, like, I'm so tired but I'm like you've got to wake up in the right frame of mind you know just set your day right and then just drink that coffee and get <laughs> that morning tea oh my goodness Stephen knows I'm like I need my tea before I can function I'm like are you going downstairs? I'm like, I'm not yeah. moving until my team <laughs> Literally, I'll be, I'll be on the film sets, like, holding, holding my cup, like, yeah, like comfort tea. I comfort tea. And I'd be, and another thing I would do on the sets as well, you know, because it's hard work. So I just like to kind of motivate people because I'm motivating myself. So I would come to set, I would play music. 
I would get everybody to kind of like stretch. You know, I, I saw that in China or in some places in the Far East, they would always get their staff to do morning stretches. And I thought, that's a great idea. It, it does make a difference. The yeah. more where I can be bothered to do exercise, I, I literally notice a difference straight away. More energy. More um, energy. Even if it's like 10 minutes, 10 minutes of stretching. Just them. Yeah. Them. You know, just breathing them. right. Just like three deep breaths. My coach says literally three deep breaths in and out. And if you do that right, it just clears your head. Yeah. There's, there's nothing worse. My mom used to do it to us when we were kids. She would come in and she would draw open the curtain like really like harsh morning wake up and i'm like mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm just like you've got to wake up right just wake up right spend that extra few minutes in bed just you know breathing so now the kids are old enough to wake themselves up so they good. always come into my room in the morning and we just have that five minutes in bed where they just come into my room we spend five minutes before it's just time to get up and do it. Cause I'm just like, okay, everybody morning cuddle. Let's just get right. All right. Scram. Get up. I love it. Love it. <laughs> Does anything scare you? Yeah. So many things scare me. Everything's good. I think, I think just being a parent is one of the most scariest things in the whole world. I'm pretty obsessed with my kids. They've gone everywhere with me. Yeah. Um, when, <laughs> When Tega was born, he came with me. My first photo shoot after Tega was born was two weeks after he was born. And I carried him with me because I didn't want to leave him at home. I carried him with me on set. And we went to America when he was two months. Um, he flew with me to a film set in Philadelphia. Um, I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared of anything happening to my kids. My, my daughter, both of them, they have literally... They've been my handbags. I've carried them up and down the whole world. Everywhere I've gone to, I'm just like, okay, even if I have to take my money out of whatever I'm earning, people are like, it doesn't make sense. You're like taking so much money out of your earnings to pay for their plane ticket or to pay for the nanny or to pay for my mom to come with me to help me. And I'm like, well, I wouldn't do the job otherwise because I didn't want to leave worried. them behind. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, if there's still profit in it, then great. Um, so this year, yeah, January, this year was the first time that I um, traveled back to Nigeria from London. I went back to Nigeria to do a film. I was away for six weeks, which was the first time. That was the longest time I've ever been away with, from them. Um, but I was able to do that because they were here in England with my mum, with my family. I could have never done that when I was in Nigeria because I couldn't have just left them. I mean, my husband is amazing, but he's got to work as well. So that would have meant that they were just with other people who are not my mum or dad you know so yeah my kids everything's good that's my that's my achilles heel um i get scared of not doing right by them not being successful enough you know not leaving a legacy behind for them everything just right now everything i'm just obsessed with what is gonna what are they gonna remember of me what am i leaving behind for them you know, have I done enough? Have I yeah. set have I set enough things in path for them? Will they be proud of me when they grow up? When they look back, will they say, My mum, my my dad, my parents did this, you know, and would they want to be encouraged to do more for themselves as well? I always tell my kids, they were like, Oh, I want my daughter especially, she's like, I want to be like you. And I'm like, No, you're gonna be more than me. You're gonna be better than me. You're gonna you're gonna exceed my expectations. And she's like, I can't be better than you, mommy. I'm like, oh, you will. I, I absolutely will. love Tallulah. Um, <laughs> I mean, again, she must be so proud of you. I mean, what message would you give to her and other young girls and women listening? Just believe in yourself. Believe that you can do it. You know, I had this, um, I had this subconscious battle with myself growing up, always wanting to prove to my dad that um, I'm capable you know, he has one son and I absolutely adore and love and idolize my older brother. But I was always like, what about me, 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 daddy, me, I can do this too. Um, you know, always kind of searching for daddy's approval because he was very much a, um, a traditional Nigerian man. And, um, and when I realized that I don't need daddy's approval, um, 
because I was doing it anyway. And I was, I was being successful anyway, but I was just waiting for that point where, where, you know, he said to me that he was proud of me, you know, you're just waiting, you know, doing all these things, all this song and dance, you know, not for your, even though you're saying you're doing it for, because it's something you love subconsciously, you just want them to be proud of you as well. Yeah. You know, and my mom was always very vocal about being proud of me. And then one day um, when I was in Nigeria, much older at this point, and, you know, um, I was in newspapers, there were, I was, articles were being written about me and things like that. Um, one of my dad's cousins saw me and he was like, ah, your daddy told me that you are in the newspaper the other day. In fact, he showed me the article oh. that you were, he was like, ah. He's really proud of you. And I was oh like, I was like, really? He's like, oh. don't mind him. I know he hasn't told you. I know he hasn't told you. But he 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 asked him, he has the newspaper. He, he's proud of you. And I was oh, like, Lola. I was like, that must be so I was so like, oh, really? <laughs> and it was it was so funny because I I realized I had been doing these things intentionally, trying to get into um into a certain position where I could see, oh daddy, look, I'm in the newspaper, and he'd be like, Oh, okay, that's nice. And then I'll leave it next to him and I'll be like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but meanwhile, the old man is there, like, ruining oh, it and showing people. Oh, that, he's my so back. Awesome. <laughs> that is so true for me. When I do stuff, it's like the first person I call is Mama. First person I call, you know, my mom. I, I want them to know. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so my, my real advice to people would be truly, truly believe in yourself and do what's going to make you happy. I mean, obviously within reason, and as long as it's not going to be dangerous to you or to anybody else, only you can kind of follow that path because at the end of the day, when you get to the end of the line or when you get to a position in life where you're not happy with things that are going on around you, you can't blame other people. You can't say, I'm here because my parents i'm here because my friends i'm here because my ex-boyfriend you know i know so many people that have missed out on opportunities because of other people you know i have friends that didn't take certain jobs or didn't take certain opportunities because of their boyfriend Mm. they're not with that boyfriend anymore you know they're not they're not living that life anymore and you look back and you think why did I do that? Yeah, Why I know did I do that. didn't go to universities because they, they, their boyfriend was going to a different one. I'm like, come on, don't exactly. do it. And you just want to like do- say no. Yeah, go, going to a school because that's where all your friends are going. Is yeah. it the right school for you? I just, you know, I wish that if I, if I said to myself when I was younger, um, I wish I had really just fully embraced fully embraced my path I'm I'm so happy everything I've done so far but I could have done more I could have done more but I was still well, trying plenty to do the time, Lola. plenty time but I remember what I was going to say so at some point I was saying this but I but I I guess we must have gone off on another branch I was saying that there are all these um stepping stones all these milestones that we have to tick off in life do you have the, do you, did you get married? Did you have the kids? Did you buy the house? Do you have the car? All these things that you tick off and then you get to 40, you stop and you look around and you say, what next? Right. And that's, I think that's where I left it. You get to 40, you say, what next? And then you realize that by God's grace, you still have almost double your life left. Right. So what you just said, there's still so much time there is because You know, we try and push and cram so much success Mm -hmm. into these first like 30 years, 25, 30, 40 years of our life. And then what are we supposed to do for the rest of the 40 years? You know, some people I know are not going to make it. You might, you might pass away at whatever time, 50, 60, 70, you might never make it to 40. Mm -hmm. But when you do make it to 40, you think I have time left what am I going to do now? You know, it's never too late to start a new business. You know, it's never too late to move, to move to a different country, to chase your dreams, to yeah. say, you know what? I'm going to dye my hair pink. I <laughs> know I'm going to rock blonde. Gonna rock white. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know why not Absolutely. because you realize you get to an age that you are old enough to do whatever you want to do so i had a lot of years it's <laughs> it's really funny because i google whack myself do you ever google whack yourself i do have a little sneak yeah <laughs> have a sneak have a sneak little google whack so because of my website, um, the SEOs, the back end tells me like what Google searches come by. Mm -hmm. And one of the top Google searches is always how old is Lola Maja? And I have to laugh. I have to laugh. I, I laugh. Oh, okay. Love because especially in Nigeria, um, I mean, here you can do whatever you like, whenever you like, but especially in Nigeria, which is quite a confined conformist society. You know, I've always kind of stuck out a little bit when I came back as a sore thumb a couple of years ago. You know, now everybody's rocking different colors and it's fine. Yeah. But, you know, when I first got there and I'm, I've got like Hello Kitty jewelry, I've got pink hair, I'm, I'm, you know, rocking white hair, I'm changing my hairstyle all the time. I'm doing all these things and people are calling me Agbaya, you know, like no Peter Pan syndrome. Yeah, Peter Pan syndrome. People are like see this person you're you're in your 30s you're not married yet yeah. see this person you've got pink hair you know how many times how many aunties how many random strangers made derogatory comments of you know if you don't grow up nobody's ever going to want to marry you or you know you better settle yourself down in life time is going by you're not young anymore all those kind of comments yeah. and now i'm like i'm 42 i've been married for 10 years I've got two children. See you later. And you're working it. And, and I you're my working business. it. So what are you going to tell me? You know, I found somebody that loved me for me. What are you going to tell me? I didn't need to change. I was myself. And yes. by being true to myself, I'm true in my relationships. I'm true with my children. I'm true in my work. You know, if you change who you are fundamentally to fit into whatever... Um, society is telling you that you should you because inside you're not really happy you're not happy with the the hand that life has dealt you because yeah. you were wishing you had something else you know whereas if you believe it and achieve it yes. you know <laughs> it's, Lola, and you're it's, thankful again you're speaking my language authenticity the minute i decided I'm not going to try and impress anyone. I'm not going to try and please anyone, fit the mold. It's going to be myself. Like life yeah. just becomes so much easier. Yeah. You know, you sieve through all the nonsense. You, you, you get rid of all the, you know, the people with bad energy. Like life becomes simple. And I yeah. make firm belief. It becomes very simple. It attracts good. So and we actually radiate energy out of our body and people can feel, people can feel when you're being genuine, people can feel when you're being happy. I mean, I once, I once heard one of my friends um, came and advised me about somebody um, who had bad energy and their, I, their energy was basically negative because they couldn't believe that I was so nice. Mm. And I'm like, don't, don't judge me based yeah. upon what you think a person should be like. If yeah. I want to be, if I want to be free, if I want to be happy, I'm happy because I'm thankful for what God has given me. Oh my you God. know, there are days that I'm sad, but that is because I might feel like I'm not achieving as much as I want to achieve, yeah. but then it doesn't mean that I still can't achieve it. If I just, exactly. you know, put myself right. And there are times where you have to make those choices of what you're willing to sacrifice. And I've had to turn down jobs. I've had to turn down different things because I've made the decision, not because somebody else has told me to, but because I've made the decision that it's not right for my life right now. Yes. It might've been right for me 10 years ago, 20 years ago. It might've been, it might be right for me in five years time, but right now it wasn't right for me. And you just got to go with that and just believe that you're making the right choices for you in this very moment. Oh, Lola, so many words of wisdom, so much that, I mean, I'm going to watch this again because I, I you know, honestly, you, you've, you've really touched on so many important points and I know that anyone listening will get so much from this. Like, I feel so inspired. I, I, you, know, it's you inspire me. You're always you so inspire me. I always have the nicest things to say. Like, I, and it's, it's something that I have 
subconsciously noted about you that you do whenever you send a message you always find something nice to say within that message it's like you consciously impart positivity in every single conversation you have and it's amazing it's an amazing gift Oh, Lola, you are a gift to the world. Thank you so much for coming on. Where can people find you? Um, in my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they have to just Google me, baby. Instagram. Google me. They can find me. They can find me anywhere and everywhere you're looking for me. Just you know, send the, send the back signal out. You know, just search Lola Maja, Instagram, Facebook. Um, you might find Lola Maja or Kojavo funny because yes i am married and that's another thing i have to say i am a hyphenated i am hyphenated love it, love um it. with my husband's permission because he was just like lola maja is the brand the okojavor is me but lola maja is the brand so yeah just check for lola maja okojavor i love it and, can, you, can you flash yeah. those beautiful nails nigeria Woo! this is nigeria oh, this is nigeria this is n sars this is this is my statement stars absolutely yeah. <laughs> thank you so much it's been thank a you delight and we we shall catch up very soon covid go away <laughs> We need a nice cup of tea and some, and some cake. <laughs> See ya! Bye! Today's episode is sponsored by By Rotation, the UK's leading peer-to-peer -peer fashion rental app, where you can hire luxury designer clothes and accessories from top brands in the UK. Today I'm wearing a Valentino dress and Lala is wearing a Ghani dress. Find out more at www.byrotation.com.